Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I uh, would like to welcome you to the first melanoma educational session. Uh, my name is Dr. Kahn Harmankaya from Vienna in Austria, and I will tell you a little bit of, about melanoma immuno-oncology. Um, our topic, as I said, uh, is the, especially the immuno-oncology of metastatic melanoma. And um, in the past years, there has been a lot of research going on and uh, many new developments which I would like to share with you today. Uh, the current options for stage four melanoma treatment are basically three columns. That's still chemotherapy in many countries, which you can use in first and second line treatment. Then there is a new field uh, which we can uh, uh, summarize as TKI therapy, and it's used for patients who have specific mutations like the BRAF mutation. And here, we also have combinational therapeutic options, which we can use in first and in second line treatment. But today, I will tell you about immuno-oncology uh, and immunotherapy. And here we have a new drug, which, which is called Yervoy or Ipilimumab with its generic name. And this one, we can also use in first and second line therapeutic treatment. So Ipilimumab is basically the first of its class. Uh, and it's a drug which is directed against the CTLA-4 receptor on, on T cells. So what does the, the CTLA-4 receptor do? Basically, it down-regulates um, the potential of T cells to find tumor cells and to um, increase the, the, the ability of, of attacking the tumor. And by blocking the CTLA-4 receptor, uh, the patient can get an increased um, immunologic reaction, which is then directed against the tumor. And of course, uh, patients not only have a clinical response, but in many, uh, in many cases, we also see uh, side effects, which we summarize as immune-related adverse events. Here in this slide, uh, you can see how, in the sketch, you can see how it basically is um, designed, how these um, side effects um, develop and also how response is being um, directed against the melanoma cells. And basically, um, we have uh, antigens which are also um, directed or, or uh, seen on normal cells. So those activated T cells uh, have some sort of side effect on normal cell tissue and not only on melanoma cells. Other drugs and their targets. So in the, in the large field of uh, immuno-oncology, we have many, many upcoming new drugs which are directed against various specific um, subtypes of, of, of targets um, involving the immune system. And I would like to um, direct your attention to uh, the class of anti-PD-1 um, receptor blockers, uh, which you can see on the lower right side. Those are the, the ones with the highest um, or with the fastest um, evolving clinical trial situation, and many of them will hopefully be, be available uh, for treatment of our patients in the near future. If we uh, compare uh, anti-CTLA-4 treatment with anti-CTLA-4 treatment, which I just uh, spoke about, it's mainly direct, um, active in the peripheral uh, blood. But if we um, look at anti-PD-1 therapy, uh, we see something profoundly different, and uh, we can see that the PD-1 um, receptor is also expressed on the tumor cells, and uh, there we have not only a peripheral activity, but also an activity of the drugs directly at the tumor cell. And this is something uh, very interesting, fascinating, and also uh, profoundly different to the anti-CTLA-4 therapy I will refer to today. So what are the specifics of anti-CTLA-4 antibody therapy? Um, and here I uh, have shown you or I've picked um, some of the survival curves of ipilimumab. And this is the registrational study where you can see some very interesting um, facets of those survival curves. And I would like to direct your attention first 
uh, to the left uh, sketch where you can see that many, many patients have a sustained uh, survival uh, for a very long period of time at the end of the curve. And this is indicated by the du uh, long durable uh, response curve number B. Uh, on the other hand, there are patients uh, which uh, get their um, uh, response to the drug at a rather late stage. So the separation of the curves is at a rather late um, phase. So we, we need, from this sketch, we know that we need time for the drug to have effectivity uh, in the patient. And this situation has been basically confirmed in all of the ipilimumab trials. So it's a very durable and robust um, scientific data where basically the overall survival curve is very stable and um, is, is, um, is durable in around 20 to 30% of patients. And here you can see the first, uh, first line therapeutic uh, trial, the O24 trial, uh, which is, uh, has led to the first line approval of this drug. Some data, which in my uh, clinical opinion are extremely important, are summarized data of many, many ipilimumab patients which have been treated over the past years. And here you can see a total of almost 5,000 patients. So those data are really correct and really robust. And we can see that basically if patients survive the first three years after their therapy, then we can be very sure that the patients will survive onwards. And this is something very fascinating and absolutely important to us. And comparing this with histological controls, which you can see on the right uh, sketch, um, one can see the, the therapeutic um, improvement very, very um, uh, profoundly. And this uh, finding is extremely important when you communicate this to your patients. So the dosing schedule for ipilimumab uh, is very simple. There are four doses which uh, are being administered uh, as an IV shot over 90 minutes uh, at an interval of three weeks. Uh, overnight stay is basically not necessary and uh, the, the therapeutic schedule is rounded up by a CT scan at week 12. Uh, if we look at one year of ipilimumab treatment, uh, you can see on the upper right corner uh, those four ipilimumab shots, followed up by the CT scan, and if the patient is in, in, in improving or stable condition, one would uh, follow up with the CT scans on a three-monthly basis. And basically, uh, we suggest to follow up improving patients for beyond uh, one and a half or two years, and then go down to a CT scanning interval of twice a year. For patients, which you can see here uh, as partially progressing or as having signs of progression, um, at the week 12 CT scan, we suggest uh, to perform a follow-up CT scan in between at week 18 or 20 to see if those patients had what we call a late response. Um, the lunula you, you see here in this sketch uh, shows the incidence of side effects of immune-related adverse events, and basically patients can develop those immune-related adverse events from the first dosing on, but they have an increase of, uh, in, of incidence of those side effects around week 7 to week 12, but also beyond week 12. So we need to take good care of our patients even beyond the time frame when the therapy is effectively over. When we uh, look at the pros and cons of uh, ipilimumab treatment, uh, we can clearly see that uh, there is a durable and long-term response at, for patients. Um, the drug works in patients who have a BRAF mutation, but it also works in patients with do, which do not have this mutation. Uh, it works in around 20% of patients, and uh, we have uh, a certain specific um, type of, of response pattern, which I refer to a little bit later. And uh, this needs to be taken into account when we uh, manage our patients. Uh, on the contrary side, um, many of our patients um, have a late onset of activity. So patients with a with a very aggressive tumor might not profit from this treatment. There is basically no upfront biomarker available. Still, 70% 70, 70 of patients uh, do not 
um, have a clinical effect to the drug and there are considerable side effects which we need to take care of. Also, uh, the long-term uh, follow-up intervals beyond week 12 need to be taken into account for patients who have a good clinical response and those patients are still at risk of developing side effects and we need to manage them thoroughly. So, um, there are uh, scientific, um, there's a lot, lots of scientific work going on uh, in the field of biomarkers for ctla 4 receptor uh, antibody treatment. And I just summarized some of them for you. So there are uh, pre-therapeutic um, uh, biomarkers being evaluated. One of those is the, the polymorphisms of the receptor itself. Then there are, of course, specific tumor-associated antigens, which we are analyzing and which still have to be validated for the treatment. And then, of course, there are biomarkers which are monitored during the treatment um, to, to see if those patients pot potentially benefit from the drug. Uh, this slide uh, shows you how um, polymorphisms of the CTLA CTLA4 receptor are being uh, validated for biomarker analysis. Uh, you can see that around 30% of patients have anti-tumor response and um, many scientific uh, centers uh, in the world think that uh, a certain amount of um, CTLA-4 receptors is uh, prone to be attacked by the drug, so developing therapeutic response, and there are non-activatable uh, CTLA-4 receptors which result in no clinical response. And currently there are large clinical trials going on trying to validate those um, findings. Unfortunately, as I said, there are no validated biomarkers at hand currently. And uh, well, that's a problem on how to select the right patient for an immuno-oncologic drug like ipilimumab. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your attention in the first part of our melanoma immuno-oncologic um, session, and I hope that you join in for the second part coming up. Thank you.